Hey, it's Tom here. So just before we get into this video, um, there is a podcast episode that I've actually been kind of teasing in a few uh, recent videos that I have now sat down and recorded, and that is a deep dive uh, into the business of Alibaba, and that was done with Jason from the After Dinner Investor. So um, if you're interested in checking that out, definitely watch this video first and hit like on the video. Um, but if you're interested in hearing thoughts on Alibaba from myself and also from Jason, that will be linked down in the description below to the After Dinner Investor podcast. So um, with all that said, let's get into the video and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now, as many of you will know, I'm an avid follower of an investor by the name of Monish Prabhai. And Monish Prabhai was an investor that really started out buying, as he described it, 50 cent dollars, which he would then sell for 90 cents within a couple of years before going out and purchasing the next 50 cent dollar and sort of a rinse and repeat type strategy of buying really deep value beaten up kind of individual companies. And over the last year, he has really had a dramatic shift in terms of his strategy. And he's now focused more on buying long-term compounders, very much Charlie Munger style. And one of the investors who has been most influential in terms of helping Pabrai to kind of go through that change in philosophy is a guy by the name of Nick Sleep. Now, Nick Sleep with his partner, Zach, ran Nomad, an investment partnership based out of the UK, which returned about 920% to investors over its short 13 year lifespan. And Nick and Zach very much started out as deep value cigar butt style investors as well. They even went so far as to travel to Zimbabwe and invest in beaten up cement companies as the country was going through hyperinflation. Uh, but they too transitioned to buying into great businesses. And by the time they closed Nomad down, they really had almost all of their eggs in only three baskets. They had a portfolio of a handful of stocks, but by far and away, the majority of that portfolio was only in three stocks. And those businesses were Berkshire Hathaway, Amazon, and Costco. And even after closing down Nomad, uh, Nick Sleep continued to hold those three stocks until the point where uh, Amazon was something like 70% of his portfolio in 2018 uh, when he eventually sold out about 50% of his Amazon stake after owning it for about 16 years up until that point. And uh, he'd basically ridden Amazon from $30 per share to over $3,000 per share. Uh, and in the fund, he'd also owned Costco for about 18 years, which uh, was not quite as spectacular a return as Amazon, but nonetheless, it was a spectacularly successful investment. Now in this video, I want to focus on really two of those three core holdings for Nomad and Nick Sleep through uh, Nick and Zach's investment partnership. And those two businesses are Amazon and Costco. I'm kind of going to forget about Berkshire Hathaway for now um, because Nick and Zach really had one key insight throughout their entire investment career. They had many insights, I'm sure, but one was far more powerful than all the rest of the, the insights they had in their entire career. Um, and that was this concept of scale economy shared. Now, uh, Nick and Zach used to read annual reports as they described it until they were blue in the face. Blue. Uh, Nick Sleep in particular would travel so much that he basically ran out of pages on his extra large passport because of all the stamps he was collecting going through airports. Um, and they talked to a huge amount of management teams, studied a huge number of companies, looked at a massive number of different business models, and they kind of just kept circling back to this idea of scale economy shared, which uh, I will get into some detail with very shortly. And they saw that both Costco and Amazon were prime examples of this business model, and they really never came across a business model quite like it. And I should also mention that a lot of the information I'm getting is from this book, Richer, Wiser, Happier, which um, I think I've said in previous videos already, but I will do a full book review on that uh, book once I am through it. Uh, and I also understand that Nick's Leap's letters are publicly available. I must admit I've only read the first couple of years of those letters, but that is something that I intend to spend a lot more time on so that I can read through all of the letters from uh, Nick and Zach and their investment partnership. Now, this concept of a business model that runs scale economies shared 
um, is really quite a simple business model when you get down to the core of it. Basically, uh, scale economies shared means that as a business gets, gets larger, they have economies of scale. So with an example like Costco, um, the bigger that Costco grows, the more that they can negotiate in terms of trying to get lower prices from their suppliers to purchase and various goods that they have in their stores. Um, and basically the business model of scale economy shared is every time that they increase their scale and they're able to get cheaper goods in the door and make kind of efficiency gains in their business, they pass those savings directly onto the customers. They really aren't interested in trying to increase the profit margins uh, in their business. Costco, again, is a famous example where uh, anytime that they buy a product from a supplier and put it in their stores, they will never mark up that product more than 15%, even if they think they can get away with it in the short term. So if they can can get uh, cheaper goods to put into their stores again they'll continue to mark it up by no more than 15 percent and Costco customers can trust that when they go into a Costco store that is basically the cheapest price they are gonna get almost anywhere for any of these different goods so as a business like Costco continues to open new stores and scale up their business and as Amazon continues to grow its customer base and expand internationally both of these businesses are able to make drastic savings in terms of the cost of goods to sort of supply their business, and then they can pass a very, very high percentage, if not all of those savings, onto their customers. Now, Nick Sleep and his partner, Zach, basically saw this concept of scale economy shared as a huge advantage for the investor who could recognize these types of businesses. Now, um, we've all heard the likes of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger talk about this concept of a moat. Now the moat for a business like Costco is basically um, being able to be the low cost supplier of bulk goods, of bulk shopping. So um, the business model of Costco is basically you buy an annual membership, um, you can then be a member of the Costco stores and shop at Costco and get basically the cheapest goods you will find almost anywhere. And because Costco continues to have the cheapest goods you can find almost anywhere, uh, they're able to continue expanding their business. And as they're able to do that and expand the business and open new stores, they're able to take more advantage over and over and over again of these scale economies shared. So as they open a new store and they get more bargaining power with suppliers, they can pass on those savings to their customers, which again creates more demand for Costco. So they have more customers because the uh, value proposition is even more attractive because goods are even cheaper than they were before. And they can keep this investment runway just going basically over and over and over again. Uh, and every time they open a new store, basically the moat gets wider and wider and wider. It's a little bit like something like a network effect on Facebook where uh, the product is better because all of your friends are on Facebook or uh, you know the product is better because all of your friends are on Instagram. Uh, as the network of Costco stores gets larger, it makes it harder and harder for someone to open their own supermarket chain uh, and try and make an effort to compete with Costco. And in Richer, Wiser, Happier, there's actually a quote from a 2005 shareholder letter from Jeff Bezos to Amazon shareholders where he basically talks exactly about this concept. Now, um, when Nick and Zach first bought into Amazon right around this time, um, there was a lot of kind of concern from Wall Street and criticism from Wall Street about Amazon basically uh, not making any money. <laughs> and they continued to uh, reinvest in the business and grow the business. Uh, and there were a lot of kind of short term thinkers that were really critical of kind of that approach. Um, and this is basically what Jeff Bezos said. So he said, relentlessly returning efficiency improvements and scale economies to customers in the form of lower prices creates a virtuous cycle that leads over the long term to a much larger a dollar amount of free cash flow and thereby to a much more valuable amazon.com hell yes <laughs> <laughs> no yeah doubt. absolutely no doubt so um that insight is basically exactly what nick and zach saw at amazon and it's also exactly what they saw at costco that uh, the value of the business is enhanced over the long term by 
relentlessly trying to give these efficiency gains back to customers in the form of lower prices. So that's really it for this video. Um, it's key insight that Nick and Zach kind of got through their investment journey with Nomad. Um, and it's one that I've kind of been pondering the last few days after having read that chapter from Rich Wiser Happier. Um, I've kind of been like driving in my car trying to think through different businesses that might be a, another example of scale economy shared uh, that perhaps the market hasn't recognized and bit up through the roof like an Amazon or a Costco. Um, it would be phenomenal if I could find the next Amazon or Costco in 2003 type investment like, like Nick and Zach were able to. But um, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you do happen to know of any businesses that might be the future scale economy shared, uh, in a niche that hasn't been quite carved out yet by an Amazon or a Costco. Definitely drop that down in the comments below because I would absolutely love to hear some suggestions there. Um, but that's it from me for this one and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.